So this is my spoiler review of The Hobbit, The Desolation of Smaug. If you haven't seen the movie yet, you can watch my regular review by clicking here on this annotation, which doesn't have any spoilers. But this is for people who have seen the movie, or read the books, or just don't mind spoilers. All right, as always, I have my notes over here, so you might see me reference them occasionally. Uh, but let's get started with Smaug. Some people say Smog, some say Smaug. They were saying Smaug in the movie, so I'm going to go with Smaug, but I might slip up. So please forgive me. All right, as I ended my regular review, I said that the scenes were epic, and I meant epic. This was such a beautifully realized dragon, and a surprisingly expressive one. I was really impressed with that, and Benedict Cumberbatch, by the way, really delivered as the voice here. He also said he's done motion capture for the dragon. I still don't understand how that would work because it's not shaped like a human, uh, but maybe the, the facial expressions, but still, a dragon has a snout, so don't expect to be like, hey, is that Benedict Cumberbatch? But you'll hear his voice. I did think it was a little distracting to have him also voice Sauron or the Necromancer or whoever that character might be because you're like, oh, was all evil have the same voice? Uh, I mean, Benedict Cumberbatch has a very distinct voice and he can't really disguise it. I guess why would he want to disguise his moneymaker? Uh, but he's very good here. I would say he's as good as Smaug as he is as Sherlock. And I wish this had been the role that he had kind of been introduced to uh, American audiences with or something of this caliber with his, where they could see his face. Because I think that a lot of people don't understand why so many of us are Cumberbatch fans because they see him in Star Trek Into Darkness and the Fifth Estate and the very bit roles that he has in August Osage County um, and uh, 12 Years a Slave, very tiny throwaway roles. And he's really not making the impression that he needs to to justify why he's so beloved by, so, by this by this small yet very fervent group, which I'm a member of, uh, but I think this will help. He, you know, it's almost feel like like a Shakespearean performance. He elevates himself to the level of Ian McKellen here, to Patrick Stewart. You know, when they bring in one of these great theater actors, and everyone's like, "Look out! The acting here is about to get really good." And that's what Cumberbatch does. And I hope that he can find a way to do that himself on in person, in the flesh, in a big Hollywood blockbuster. He's great. And uh, after, as I said in my uh, non-spoiler review, about two thirds through the film loses its way, and I think Cumberbatch's Smaug does a lot to bring it back on track. Very exciting action sequence with him versus the dwarves. Very clever. Uh, I really, you know, thought it was scary. I really liked it. I thought those spiders were scary, too, by the way. It had me jump a number of times during the movie. I really liked it. Although it did, I got some serious Harry Potter vibes a number of times while watching this movie. Almost to the point where if Harry Potter were to pop out, I would not be totally surprised. I'd be like, oh, excellent, crossover. Warner Brothers could do it. All right, so that's what I thought of Smaug. I'm very excited to see what's going to happen to him. I kind of have some spoilers. I've never read the books, but I know what happens to Smaug, and I think it was interesting how they were able to kind of, uh, uh, you know, draw it out. However, though, I was like, Bilbo, what's taking you so long telling everybody about that missing, uh, you know, scale in his armor? Literally. Uh, so I thought, you know, that was just a little bit tad frustrating. But I think if I hadn't known that fact, uh, I wouldn't have been frustrated by it. Okay, next. Let's talk about our returning characters and the ones that are from the Lord of the Rings franchise. We, of course, we have Gandalf. That Ian McKellen continues to be awesome in the role. He totally, that battle he had with the necromancer in that castle, super cool. That was one of the moments the most, that and Smaug, when I really felt this felt, uh, the movie captured the feeling of a fantasy illustration from those great children's novels, you know, that you can just, it's a single still drawing, but it just says so much. Uh, the Battle of Light and Dark was done really well and had a very modern feel to it in terms of the quality of the special effects, but didn't lose the timeless fantasy element, which I thought was so awesome. It was so great. Uh, you could, I was expected to like turn to the left and someone selling crystals over there, like, you know, those crazy kiosks in the mall. It was that kind of fantasy geek level. I loved it. All right, also, uh, Legolas. I think it's Legolas, that's how you pronounce it. Uh, Orlando Bloom was great here. I think he was so much better than he ever was in the Lord of the Rings films, and I'm sure he's very happy that he kept pestering Peter Jackson to have him come back and get to have some great scenes, and Jackson really delivered for him here. I they gave him a little bit of a... Now, it's, now of course, some of, the, some of the tension for both him and Gandalf are taken away, because I know they're never going to be in huge danger, because they are in the other films. So I'm like, oh, I don't have to be too worried about uh, Le Legolas fighting that... Uh, Legolas fighting the orc because I know he's going to be okay, but I still was kind of scared for him. He handled the action sequences really well, uh, Orlando Bloom. I thought he did a really nice job, and I think that while his character elves are devoid of emotion, he did a nice job showing off that he really liked Toriel, or Tori Toriel? I think it's Tor Toriel? I'm not quite good at pronouncing names, I'm sorry. Uh, but they were all very convincing with their uh, elvish language, elven language. I thought that was really good. And I had re I'd, I'd read uh, that Evangeline Lilly, for instance, had hired a dialect coach to help her, uh, and it really paid off. And they really sold these different communities. They all felt, you know, like they could mesh, but they felt separate. Uh, so Orlando Bloom, 
great job, great action sequences. He was really good. I loved, every time he was on screen, I thought the movie kicked it up a notch. Uh, as for the new character by Evangeline Lilly, I thought that was a great character. Uh, I loved having a, a, a female character in there. She didn't always save the day, which I thought was great. Although when she did in, that, uh, in Bard's house, I have to tell you, Several women in the theater clapped and cheered, uh, and I, I was very excited. I did not actually go to the clapping and cheer stage, but I was with them, uh, and it was great to see her there. I also loved, thought that it was just interesting they gave her a romance. That was quite the liberty that Peter Jackson and Fran Walsh are taking here, considering that she is a character they brought into the into the books themselves. Uh, but I think she'll instantly have a fan base. She was very likable, uh, and as I said, I really like female characters that can become competent, part of the group, get things done, but, you know, aren't going around being, you know, sarcastic and, you know, trash-talking all the guys. So, really good character, and Evangeline Lilly did a really nice job with both the, you know, the action sequences and the softer sequences as, as well. I thought it was a great addition to the film. I was very happy with it. Uh, okay, so she was very cool. All right, Bard the Bowman. You know, Luke Evans was very good here. He certainly made more of an impression than he did in Fast 6. Uh, I'm excited to see what he gets to do in the third film. Uh, I liked him a lot. He doesn't have too much to do here, but what he does, he does very well. I thought he was very convincing. He also added a lot of energy to his sequences, uh, and I thought he was well cast. And, you know, as I said, his character does pique my interest. He's no elf, but I thought it was good. Uh, it was very Dickensian, uh, Lake Town. I thought that was funny. And, and I thought that Stephen Fry has a very small part. I'm sure he's probably going to do more in the third film, hopefully, but he, he did serve his purpose quite nicely here. Uh, but I have to say, Bilbo and Thor and Oakenshield and those dwarves still remain the heart of the film particularly Bilbo, but I'll get to him in a minute. But as far as Thorne goes, I thought that Richard Armitage really came into his own with the role here. I thought he added a, layer, a sense of vulnerability when you got to see how small he was with the better special effects and more wide shots showing that and him going up against much larger opponents. But yet he also kept a very regal feel to him, to his character. Uh, and also the, you know, flirting with, was he maybe being driven mad by this treasure and the... Um, the, 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 oh, the diamond, I forgot the name of it. Ah, it's like the Oaken, oh, he's Thor Oaken Shield. Ah, damn it. Ah, crap. It's right on the tip of my tongue. I hate when that happens. But uh, he did a very nice job as well. I really liked his, him in the role. And I hope that somebody picks him up. He was being considered at one point, his name was being bantied around for Batman. Uh, but I thought he was really, really good. Um, so let's go to Bilbo. Good old Martin Freeman. Wow, he really is the heart of the franchise, and he had some great lines that he really delivered so well. For instance, when he was almost told Gandalf about finding the ring. Uh, also, uh, when he said, you know, when he told that other dwarf, he was like, you know, I said I would do it, I might, I might at least try. And he just really got across, you know, it wasn't bravado, he wasn't like the sarcastic, you know, uh, Zach Galifianakis, the Robert Downey Jr. dwarf. He had like a lot of integrity. Even though he was wrestling with inner demons, he was able to capture all of that. Uh, and even just sometimes with a facial expression or a, a body, uh, you know, a gesture, he was able to really convey so much emotion. And I feel bad that Martin Freeman hasn't had more luck, uh, but he is moving to television with Fargo, the, you know, the series, it's, they're doing a television version of it. He'll, he'll show up there. And of course, he's on Sherlock. So we don't have to feel sad for Martin Freeman, but he's really a talented actor and it's really coming across here. Oh, by the way, side note, who else loved Peter Jackson's cameo right at the beginning of the film? You really had to catch it, but it was great, and he, 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 was, he shows a love for the material. Now, overall, how did I feel about the film? As I said, I really loved it, even though I felt that it had pacing problems and just perhaps not enough story to hold up its length, although I want that long a movie, so I'm as torn, I think, as Peter Jackson is. Uh, but you'll know, a lot of you noticed that I didn't think of putting this, or I, didn't, I chose not to put it, on um, my top 10 2014 sequels to look out for. And I stand by that, because Peter Jackson at this point, aside from special effects, has really ceased to do anything groundbreaking. He's not like pushing the edge of the envelope, and I think that takes away a little bit of excitement, which is why I think you don't see people talking about The Hobbit as much. It's not going to have a record-breaking weekend box office. It's not, you know, it's not even supposed to do, uh, I think Catching Fire did, like, will probably do about did open with twice is what this did. And that's because, you know, this isn't something people are like, I must get to the theater. But people will see it eventually. It's why this movie, this, The Hobbit, eventually got to a billion. And why this one probably will too. And why these movies will make all this money and continue to be rented, become classics that people always say, oh, you have to, you've never seen the uh, Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit films? You gotta watch them. You gotta watch the Middle Earth movies. They'll always have that factor. Because at the end, I think, bottom line, Peter Jackson is a master storyteller, and this is a great story. And who doesn't appreciate a good story? So even though it might not be our most anticipated, it might not might not make us, you know, shake us to the core like that Godzilla trailer, but it's just such a wonderful place to escape to, and I think to some degree uh, it serves a, it's, it has a service for moviegoers and just 
film lovers to create that. And I'm glad it's making enough money, to more than enough, to continue. Uh, I guess you could always say in a perfect world, Jackson would do all of this and continue to push the envelope. Uh, but maybe if he passes on the franchise, because I'm sure that Warner Brothers will try and find a way to keep this going. Because if we can have episode seven, we can have a seventh uh, Middle Earth film. But perhaps it is time for Peter Jackson to find someone he trusts and that Warner Brothers trusts to take this over and to maybe, you know, bring in some new energy and kick things up a notch. Uh, but I, you know, uh, there's a Lagasse shadow. But I, re I really did love the movie and I highly recommend you see it in theaters. It's a theater experience. I'm sure everybody, a lot of people have big screen TVs these days, but see it in 3D, see it on the big screen. Uh, I think you won't regret it. And it's a wonderful holiday movie. Super cozy. Good luck not falling asleep. I do have to admit, I fell asleep for about five minutes when they were trying to figure out where that door was. I was just like, this is so cozy and nothing's happening. And then luckily I woke up right before um, and I knew that I was like, oh, Bilbo will figure it out. And then he, he very nicely woke me up when he did. But I just loved it so much. I had a great time. Uh, and I hope you do too. Thank you for tuning in to my spoiler review. You can uh, check out, uh, if you didn't see the other episode, you can, there's a link now to this. And I hope you'll check out some other episodes uh, right now. Bye. <laughs>